So I've always made a point when I install an operating system of writing out what I did so that I can do it again. And if I'm at work, somebody else can do it again without me helping them if necessary. Um, my own machine, this Rev Linux is my desktop at home. Lenovo Linux is this thing. Um, this is me customizing things exactly the way I damn well please. And I've been installing Linux since 1995, I believe. So what I like to do is probably too crazy for normal people. Although you guys would probably approve a lot of it. What's that? Yes. My question is what happens when an ordinary non-deranged computer geek tries to install this stuff? And so I looked into it. And this is where the distributions become interesting. I think this is where distributions are really critical. I think if we hand you something really stupid, you will install it and work out what you want to do and figure out how to do it and solve all the technical problems because you know what you're doing. You might have to install something from source or something like or whatever. But I'm asking the question, what happens if an ordinary person who doesn't know what they're doing tries to install it? That means a lot of stuff doesn't really have to work. Um, if, the, if the programming, if it's not, if it's, if it's Python 2.7 rather than Python 3, they'll never know. We don't care. So I did it. And, and what I did here, I was also using an old beat up, a beat up old computer. It's a 32-bit machine, which created some interesting challenges as well. But I succeeded. Um, basically, Ubuntu standard, what I did, let's just click on my, these are, this is my website. I'm not connecting the internet. I mean, what we're looking at right now is my, is my, my source where I actually edit the thing. So this is on the internet. We click on Ubuntu standard, and I went summary. And a lot of this is, I'm using LaTeX to do this document. So I can, uh, LaTeX is really, 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 really good at master documents and linking things. So this thing's repetitive as hell, actually. Um, this is it here. Basically, this was the easiest one I did. I'm a Fedora guy. I'm running Fedora 27 on this machine. I think, it's, I think my desktop is for Fedora 28 at the moment. But I did Ubuntu, and it worked. It, it just worked. Um, this, I, I installed Ubuntu 16 because it wouldn't let me down, download Ubuntu 18 for the 32-bit computer. Uh, 18 was available for 64-bit. I installed it. it. When I got the install done, it offered to upgrade. As I'm noting here, I offered to upgrade and upgrade, and I wound up with Fedora. I, I, sorry, I wound up with Ubuntu 18. So I got the latest version. Um, the current version, I did Ubuntu again um, because I had some issues. but. Um, and I think, I think you download Ubuntu now for, a, for an old machine, you get Ubuntu 18. There's no issues. Um, the issues I had, I guess, what I was looking at was what an ordinary person would actually do when they want to install them. So, so to me, I, I like Ubuntu here because it's really easy to install. It requires very little expertise. There was nothing nasty. Um, I got a working machine with a decent firewall without doing anything really crazy and technical. I make a note in my, on my notes here, I, I point out that the text editor to Nano is available. That is Pico from the email program Pine slash Alpine. And it's user friendly, it's got a menu at the bottom, and a normal person can make it work. Um, unfortunately, I should have Xerox or scanned my, my original notes when I first encountered VI. Uh, I think a big headline across the sheet saying the fucking VI editor. Um, I, I was horrified. Um, <laughs> now I'm addicted to it. I took touch typing in high school. The, let's go down, and I took a look. On this particular install, one of my issues was planning. I was playing with a laptop. Uh, my assumption is a laptop will be taken out of the house. It will be taken to coffee shops. Um, laundromats, bars, anywhere where there's Wi-Fi, and all sorts of nasty things can happen to the machine. Um, my, lap, my laptop is encrypted, so I, I can touch type. I've got a long encryption key. Get, if you steal my laptop, you're gonna have a hard time getting it running. Although you can always pull the hard, you can pull the hard drive out and go at it with brute force. But like I said, I'm a touch typist, so it'd be quite a bit of brute force. Um, my assumption is a normal person will have to, if a normal person is installing a laptop, they need to encrypt it, and that's necessary. And that was no problem here, it just worked. I've got notes. I looked at, um, if you, do, uh, the major issue I had with Ubuntu as an install is that it doesn't let you break the partitions up. I really strongly prefer to have a root partition and a home partition. And I maintain a user local partition, but that's just because I'm old and I'm in the habit of doing that. 
Um, I don't see this is a really use for user local if you're not if you're not installing software from source and maintaining it. And I think for a lot of the applications, I've installed a lot of stuff from the source. I remember installing XEMacs from source, but um, they don't update. You have to update everything manually. You have to download the new source code or download the diff files or something like that. And nobody wants to be. Most people don't want to be doing that. They just want to. They just want to go sudo dnf minus y update and let it run. <clears throat> so on the whole, Ubuntu worked nice. A major objection to Ubuntu is it didn't do the separate partitions. I had it. It it does one big. It does one big part. It just does the one big partition. You really shouldn't. If you're a normal person, you shouldn't be installed in Ubuntu unless you have a four terabyte USB drive for a backup device. Then you're okay. If you're if you're reinstall, the issue to me is I may want to reinstall the operating system at some point, and if I've got a separate home partition, I can blow away the root and install any, and install anything I damn well please. I can put in Fedora. I can put in Slackware, whatever. So it worked. It worked nicely. Um, I did the. Uh, I detail a lot. I, I detail security hacks. I was concerned about the if the machine's a desktop at home. There's no problem with the with the graphical login where it shows everybody's picture and stuff like that. If you're in a bar or something like that, um, I would prefer I would prefer they try to guess my name, although I used my name. Um, if I give myself a flaky username, it would just be one more level of difficulty for somebody trying to hack my computer when they're not supposed to. So I looked into that. Now, next one I did was so you uh, Ubuntu to me. Ubuntu is not my favorite system, but certainly worked the best. I tried Fedora 28, and again, it's worked. What I found was that Fedora 28 wasn't totally user friendly. I could break it fairly. I could. I did a couple things, and I wound up having to restart the install. Uh, the issue to me with Ubuntu, the good thing about Ubuntu as a distribution is that it's. I found it to be idiot resistant. I couldn't screw things up. Fedora, I could. With Fedora, I was easily able to. I was able to partition the hard drive the, the hard drive the way I liked to do it. Again, it was a laptop, and I was determined to encrypt the thing. And you you wouldn't encrypt a desktop at home. I don't think you would encrypt a desktop at home. I think that's a bad idea. But on the laptop, I was able to create an extended partition, do root and home on extended partition. There was no sign of a swap. I've always put swap partitions in Linux. There was no sign of an indication that you should do that. You should do this, or that you have to. So I didn't. Uh, maybe I still got enough RAM on these machines now. Um, so I was able to do the partitioning exactly the way I liked it. So if you're absolutely fanatical about, about having a separate home partition, if you are really short of funds and you're using an old clunker machine and you want to protect your home partition while you're doing reinstalls, you're kind of stuck with, you're kind of stuck with Ubuntu. Sorry, you're kind of stuck with Fedora. It worked. It didn't, it took, it, it got the thing in here fairly quickly. Um, the major thing when you're doing an install and all of these things is when, you, when it tells you to update, you hit the update, it takes a long time to do that. You really need something to do for a couple hours. I tried Ubuntu again. This time I re-downloaded the thing, and this time I got version 18 for the 32-bit computer, and this time I was determined to partition the thing my way. This is more work that required me to understand. Uh, my assumption is a person can read my instructions and follow, follow my instructions and they'll get it. But essentially, I had to understand. I had to bring up the partitioning tool and set up partitions. I was not able to encrypt it. I didn't knock myself out. There's, I'm sure there's a proper system. There's, a, there's definitely a system, a fancy system and way of doing it. I didn't bother. I was thinking in terms of somebody not very sophisticated trying to get this thing figured out. I was not able to do to do a separate root and home partition on the Ubuntu machine um, while encrypting it. That's not a problem if it's a desktop at home. Like, who cares? Your machine's in a reasonably safe room. You don't have a problem. It is an issue to me on a la on a laptop. I think it should be encrypted. And just for the hell of it, I downloaded Slackware. Um, Slackware is the first Linux I ever installed. I was delighted. Um, it, what? You too? Me too. All right. <laughs> I was delighted at uh, doing the install. It popped up and let me select the font for the console. The uh, fortune cookie is installed by default. And all these things, I provide instructions on how to get the fortune cookie working. Because to me, what's that? How many floppies? I can't remember. 
<laughs> Don't forget, though, the, the distribution's a lot smaller back then. Um, what's that? Hmm? Still a lot of floppies. Um, I'm trying to remember how I did it. 1990, 1995, I had a CD burn. I had a CD. The I remember, main thing I remember doing in 1995 is I had a, C, a Sony CDU-335 CD drive, and the kernel didn't recognize it. So I had to come go in and compile the kernel, and then it worked. Um, I was delighted to see that thing worked. I was having troubles with, uh, I've discovered to my horror, the... Um, the HTML tools don't work right now. I've, I've got Unix and I've got Unix command line instructions on my website, and the the HTML to HTML is broken, and I haven't figured out what the problem is, is yet. Yeah. Uh, everywhere but Slackware. <laughs> <laughs> this reflects the fact that Slackware. Let's just click on it. Um, uh, in general, if you don't know what you're doing, don't go anywhere near Slackware. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I found, I got to get my summary page, the, the X window system does not boot, this is, oh, let's go back up the top here, actually, let's go to the introduction. Dun, dun. They don't update their stuff very often. Um, I downloaded Slackware in February 2018. Thank you. That's... But, yeah, it's, they don't update frequently. <laughs> Anyone else to put it? Well, let's go back up to here. The main thing I got hit was that it doesn't install, it doesn't launch the X window system by default. You have to go in and fix the init.d and, and select the run level, oh my. which is you know not what you want to do if you don't know what you're doing. You still have run levels. What's that? <laughs> they still have run levels. I, think. I didn't look at the other. Did they ditch that now? If I'm if I'm install if I'm installing Red Hat and I just want to run a mail server, I would not want to run I would not want it to try to run, I would not want to install the X window system. I would just want to have the I would just want to have the kernel and and the and 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 fetch mail. Um, if I'm running a web server, I want on the kernel and I want Apache. I'm what I would want absolutely nothing else. Posix plus your app. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I don't know. It depends what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of a functioning home machine, um, of a functioning home machine. Right about a time here? Okay. Any questions or? You were talking about uh, users partitioning disk, but like average users probably doesn't even know what partition is. So this I don't. Is, this, is why, this is why I think the Ubuntu, the, my top of Ubuntu install is the easiest one for a normal for a person that doesn't know that stuff. That's why I put it at the top of the list. Um, also, I noticed um, when I try to encrypt my laptop, you have to specify that swap has to be encrypted. Uh, otherwise, okay. it doesn't get encrypted. I and that's a big issue. Okay, when I originally encrypted a Fedora machine, I encrypted home. So the root partition was okay and swap was accessible. And that worked nicely. And I had a, and because I mistyped the, the, the encryption key, I was unable to boot the computer. Uh, I was able to get it up in single user mode. Um, so I had to redo the install, re, re, reformat the drive, and, and to get it working that way. When I tried to replace the operating system with Ubuntu, Ubuntu came back and said that encryption system is completely unacceptable because your TMP and your swap are all accessible to somebody and they will extract the naughty information that way. So Ubuntu's system, what you do to install the system is you create an extended partition and you put home and you put the, the root and home within the inside, the inside the extended partition and you encrypt the extended partition. So the Fedora, my Fedora install here, um, I have partitioned everything. On, on Fedora here, I've heard it's partitioned the way I want it to be done and it's completely encrypted. This is completely locked down. Okay. So yes, you can, yes, you can do it. Ubuntu, I guess, Ubuntu is basically right. You should be encrypting the basic drive. You should encrypt everything, but you can. I was just wondering, for the Ubuntu install, I, I'm assuming you use the graphical installer? Yes. Okay. Do you know about the alternate installers when you look at... I didn't, I 
downloaded. Remember, I'm I'm trying to think in terms of an unskilled user. I okay. downloaded the I downloaded the image. I mounted. I, I put the CD in the system. I booted the computer, and the graphical installer is what came up. Okay. Um, if you wanted to stick to the graphical installer, mm -hmm. Ubuntu 18 now defaults to um, creating a swap file. So if you encrypt your root partition, mm -hmm. it creates a swap file inside the root partition. Okay. And if you yeah. create a separate dedicated encrypted swap partition, mm -hmm. it knows not to create the swap file. Uh, don't forget, I'm keeping this as simple as possible. Oh yeah, so for the end so user who doesn't the need end to know user, about in this this arrangement here, it doesn't. It only has one partition. It only has has a boot partition to get the thing booted, and then there's a single encrypt single partition with everything in it. Yeah, in the background, which is encrypted. If you don't make any decisions, like you're just yeah. doing like a mm -hmm. big one big partition, and yeah. you don't want to know about these things, mm -hmm. Ubuntu 18 now defaults to creating that swap file for you. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't need to have a dedicated a partition, partition or even okay. think yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay.